I still uh, am awed by his command of his material and his personal passion. And so I give you Dr. Peter Dunn. subject. Um, it's one that people don't like to talk about a lot. Um, that might make some people uncomfortable, but it's, it's a fact of life and something that we should talk about. Um, I know that there may be some small children in the audience, uh, and I apologize if this makes them uncomfortable because some people don't think this topic is suitable for them, but I really think that it's something we need to cover because it is part of life. So tonight, I want to talk to you about work. <laughs> what, what did you guys think I was talking about? <laughs> so, uh, the reason I bring this up is because when you graduate, um, again, college will depend a little bit on where you go and what you're studying and so forth, but definitely after college, work is your destiny. Okay, I will foretell the future for you. What you will do in the future is you will work. You will work and work and work. You will work harder than you have ever worked before. You will work harder than you've imagined it possible for you to work, and then you will work harder than that. You will work so hard that you will look back fondly on your days at IMSA. Oh, if only I could be back when all I had to worry about was a victory summit in. This is what awaits you in life. And I want to make sure to mention that because there's this thing that happens around this time of year that the students call senioritis, which, by the way, makes no sense because when you attach itis, it means an inflammation, right? So tendonitis is the inflammation of the tendons, right? So senioritis is the what, right? So anyway, they call it, they call it senioritis, and what it means is when seniors stop doing anything. The reason that's often given for this, the seniors believe that after 13 years of hard labor in school, they have earned a little break. Notice how all the parents laugh when I say that? <laughs> well, the reason I need to bring this up is to make sure you realize that graduation is not the same thing as retirement. <laughs> and that college is not the same thing as Valhalla. When you graduate, you are going to go to college and you're going to do more of the same thing. And you're probably thinking, yes, but eventually I'll be done with all that and finally can get around to living my life. You know what your life is going to look like? That, but way more work, okay? Once you get out of college, then you will have so many more things to worry about, so many more responsibilities, and an eight-hour job. You know, a lot of you, 
talk about the great jobs you're going to have in the future. You, you dream about them, sort of misty-eyed, oh yes, I'm going to have such and such a job, and I'm going to be paid such and such a uh, large sum of money for it. What do you think they're paying you for? It's not a reward. It's not like, wow, you've been such a good kid for 22 years. I'm just going to give you a big chunk of money to do nothing. No, they're paying you to do what you did, but more. Right? They're like, wow, you showed that you could stay up really late working on something. I'm going to pay you now to stay up really late working on something. Right? This is the way the world works. And so what you have before you is work. A lot of work. Look, it's nothing new. It goes back to the book of Genesis, right? After man does the thing with the fruit, right? And so then he is cursed. And the curse says, you will eat bread by the sweat of your brow, right? In other words, if you want to eat, then you have to work. It's a fact of life. Um, and so while it's very nice to pretend, oh, well, I'm a second semester senior, yeah. I can just kick back because I've earned it. The fact is that you hopefully have a lot longer to live still, and you need to spend that time working. It's very nice to, to imagine that you could avoid that, but uh, you don't get to retire yet. You have to keep working. All right, so, uh, so why do I bring all that up? Oh my goodness, why do I bring all that up? Because I'm forgetting what I was going to say. Give me a second. Uh, right, so why do I bring all that up? Uh, part of it is remember to get more than two hours of sleep in a night so that you can remember your speech. Okay, um, the reason we need to talk about work is because you're going to go off into the workforce, right? So now you're saying, oh, I know what Dr. Dong's going to be saying. Dr. Dong's saying that work is its own reward, right? Hard work is its own reward. That is completely false. <laughs> Hard work is totally not its own reward. It depends what you do. If you don't believe me, try this. Go into IMSA, take every chair, and move it manually next to the hamster ball. And then when you're done, take them all and move them back. It will be a lot of hard work, and it will be totally unrewarding and pointless, right? So, hard work is not its own reward. Hard work really depends, or if you don't want the manual example, do this. Take out and write out longhand all the numbers from 1 to 100 million. It will take a lot of hard work and you will gain nothing from the experience. So no, hard work is not its own reward. And just because you're doing work does not mean you're doing something worthwhile. You see, we have to do work, but just because you're doing work doesn't mean you're doing something worthwhile. So you're like, oh, I know what Dr. Dog's saying. He's doing that quote, right? You know the quote? The quote is, um, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life, right? I looked on the internet to see who it was and it's attributed to at least four different people, um, uh, including, um, including Mark Anthony and this guy I've never heard of, but most people contributed to Confucius, which is utterly ridiculous. It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even translate into Chinese and it doesn't even make sense for, for China, Chinese culture at the time. Anyway, so, um, but the phrase, but you've heard the phrase, it doesn't matter. It was probably just some guy like writing inspirational quotes for a desk calendar, right? But anyway, this guy said, do what you love and you'll never work a day for his life. May I just say, as a personal testimony of someone who does what he loves, that that is completely false. I do what I love, I love teaching, and you know what? I work really hard. When, there, when you do what you love, you work harder because you love what you're doing, right? You do not avoid work. Listen, there is, there is no teacher, not even the most inspirational, the most ideological teacher, who likes grading papers. No one likes grading papers. Um, no one likes grading papers. You do it because it is part of your work, right? It doesn't matter what job you take. You are not going to enjoy every minute of it. Chances are, you're going to not enjoy many minutes of it, right? So no, that's not what I'm saying either. In fact, I just want to clear that up. Life involves work, and work is not fun. I, does this resonate with your experiences from IMSA? So what am I saying? Well, the fact is, work is part of your life, and you are required to do it. So you have to make sure that the work you do is worthwhile, because you can do it 
in a pointless way, or you can do it in a way that matters. And so I would say this, work that is really worthwhile is always a labor of love. You're like, wait, Dr. Thumb, that sounds the same as the other thing, but it's different, let me explain why. What I mean by that is the work is always motivated by love. Not necessarily love of a thing you're doing right then, but by love in general. Here I'm addressing more the older members of our audience tonight who really have experienced this firsthand, right? Because sometimes you take a job, look, I'm lucky. I got to get a dream job. When I saw this, the job opening, I'm like, oh my goodness, that sounds perfect. When I went for my interview, I was like, I have to work here, I pay them to work here. And then they pay me instead, and it's great, right? <laughs> but you know what, let's face it, you're probably not gonna get a job like that. Uh, and so, <laughs> so, if you're not going to get a job like that, what does that mean? Oh, well, I don't love this, so I'm gonna quit. It doesn't work that way. You have to get a job. Why do you have to get a job? Because you have to eat. And more so, because you're... <laughs> you have to eat, and more so, because your family has to eat, right? And so you have around you many living testimonies of people who have taken jobs that did not excite them, that did not fill them with passion every day, but were simply a way to earn money so that you could eat, right? This is what it means to have a labor of love. You may have a job that really is great, and I hope you can find such a thing. You may not be able to find such a job. You still need to get a job. But whatever it is you're doing should be motivated by love. Love of what you are doing, love of the cause you are working for, right? Love of what is right, and love of your family. These are things that should motivate your job. Well, why do I bring that up? Well, because I know what the job market looks like for bright young people. Because I like to think of myself as a bright young person, even though I am now old. Um, I mean, by your standards. Um, but, but I know what, what happens when you're finishing college. The job prospects are out there, and all of your friends will be evaluating the jobs more or less the same way they evaluated colleges. That is, you look at the numbers, and you rank them, and you pick the highest one, right? So, uh, you look at what you get from the jobs, and you look at the salaries, and the highest salary, that's the one that you take. I want to warn you against that, because often they pay you a high-paying job to do things that no one else wants to do. Why else would they pay you so much? Right? So, um, when you have these job offers out there, you need to consider what I'm doing should be something for love. Now, there is a sort of basic thing, I need to have some job, right? But beyond that, is this something I enjoy doing? Is this something that is worthwhile? Is this something that advances the human condition? Is this something that's going to allow me to provide for my family? These are things, real questions, that should motivate your job decisions. The other factors, like how much money you make, don't matter. Because once you get money, you have to spend it on something. It's no good by itself, right? No one like sits around and looks at green pieces of paper. So you have to spend it on something. What are you going to spend it on? That is the motivation, right? So the first thing is, your job should be motivated by love. You don't have to love your work, but you should love something that makes the work worth it. All right, that was part of it. Number two is the flip side of this. Let's suppose you do find your job. This is the other thing I see. You know how your friends tell you things about what you need to do to get into college? For example, you have to take, whatever, AP Chemistry. If you don't take AP Chemistry, you'll never get into University of Chicago. Now, are there people out there who've taken AP Chemistry and gotten to University of Chicago? Yes, there are. So where did that thing come from? Well, it's something that someone made up. It's not actually a rule, it's just something that your friends tell you. Not that they've ever been to college or anything, right? <laughs> but they just tell you anyway, and there are these, these things that spread around in the culture, oh, you have to do such and, thing, such and such to go to such and such college. Well, you know what, you're all into college now, congratulations, never have to do that stuff again. But you're gonna get the same thing when you're talking about when you're going to be in the workplace. Because in the workplace, 
People will tell you things, especially if you're in the high profile, high paying jobs. People will say things that are made up, but that are part of the culture. And in particular, they will say that you need to work more. You need to spend more time in the office. You need to spend late nights. You need to log in at 2 in the morning to show how hard you're working. If you leave earlier and then that person does, then you'll be the first one to be fired. You'll hear this, and the general result of this is a culture of people that say, if you're not working 12-hour days, then you're not working hard enough. You know what? If you're working 12-hour days and you have a good reason to, if what you are working on makes sense, if what you are working for is something that is good for the human condition, if something you are working on is going to help your family, then that is good and you should do it. But if you're working 12-hour days for no reason other than a vague sense that you ought to be doing it, there's a problem. Remember that work is a labor of love. It's what you do for the people and the things that you love. If, you're ever, if your work ever takes you away from the things that you love, then it's not worth doing anymore. Then it's the wrong line of work. Right? Now obviously, you, you love your family, you have to work to support them, right? But the payoff of that is that your family is happy and you can spend time with them, right? So, for those of you who didn't know, on August 17th, or thereabouts, my wife is scheduled to deliver a baby. Thank you. Clap for her, not me. She does all the work, right? Um, on August 19th, anyone know what happens? School starts on August 19th. You may have heard stories before of people who would do something like you know, oh, his wife gave birth on August 17th, and on August 19th, he shows up at work and ready to go. I want to let you know, I am totally not doing that. On <laughs> August 19th, I fully intend, well, I mean, we can't schedule these things exactly, but assuming the baby comes around then, I totally intend to be taking care of my wife and my child. Because they are, more than anything else, the reason I am working, right? And I do very much care about you, and I do love you, but let's be face it, I love them more. <laughs> right? And it's not unfair to prioritize, and I do enjoy my work, but my work is still more than anything for them. And so I'm going to spend time with them. Don't worry, I will take care of my responsibilities, modern physics will still be taught, it will be okay, right? I've, we've worked out a plan. But the point is, you will receive a lot of pressure, especially when you have or are thinking of starting a family. Actually, it's worse when you're thinking of starting a family. If you go into academia, people will tell you, uh, you probably shouldn't get married yet. Because, you know, you're going to be moving around a lot, and it might not be good, it might not work out well. So maybe you shouldn't get married right now, you're really busy. Then when you're in a postdoc, they'll be like, uh, don't have kids until you have tenure. Get tenure first, then you have kids. That takes you to your 36 or so, right? Um, right? They'll tell you that. People will say that because it's a bad career move, right? You have to remember the reason for your job, right? Hey, let's face it. I know I'm talking about like foreign territory. Look, statistically speaking, most of you are going to have a family, right? So don't pretend it's not going to happen. You need to consider this, right? When you are choosing a job, and when you are working for your job, you have to be willing to say, all right, I'm going to stop working now because I need to be with what's more important. Because it's easy to forget what's important in life. At the same time, you need to do a lot of work. Because here's the other thing. I make it sound like work is work and going home with your family is play. It's totally not, right? Everyone knows this. There is nothing you have done in your entire life that is anything close to as much work as the arduous, impossibly difficult task of raising a child to the age of 18. <laughs> I respect the difference of the people applauding this time. Okay? There is nothing that compares. There is, there is no sleeplessness that compares. Because let's face it, your sleepless nights are self-inflicted self -inflicted by League of Legends. Okay? But... <laughs> But when you have children, you have no choice. And guess what? 
you raise the child for 13 years with all kinds of sleepless nights, all kinds of last minute emergencies, all kinds of, you spend eight hours a day working and then you come home and what do you have to do? Work. You have to work at raising a child. It is not a cakewalk. And you have to do that every day and you don't get to give them to someone else on weekends. And you work there and you work for 13 whole years and you do not get to take May off. Right? You have to keep on going. In some sense, all of work, I think, is a preparation for raising a child. It is the most difficult task imaginable and also the most thankless because by the time you're done with it, your kids are all surly teenagers and all they can talk about is how they want to be as far away from home as possible. <laughs> so, you know, kids, maybe I appreciate that and you don't have to change your plans, but you should also maybe take a moment to say thanks for all the work. Go ahead. <laughs> the point is, of course, that there is nothing more challenging and nothing that requires more work and also nothing that says rewarding. At least I hope so because this is our first kid and it's too late now to get him back, and so uh, they tell me it's rewarding in the end, so. Okay, because the thing about work is that even though we view it as some kind of necessary evil to be overcome to get to the enjoyment, that's not actually how work is. You know, if you look even further back, further back in the book of Genesis, before the business with the tree and the fruit and all that, even before the creation of woman, it says God placed man in the Garden of Eden to work it. Work is not only man's curse, it is also man's privilege, man's right, man's duty, and man's purpose. So as you go out there to join the workforce, realize that you go there to work, and that your work is your blessing from God. And tonight, I'm here, and I get the privilege of giving you my blessing as well, because that's uh, something I like to do with the seniors. So class of 2013, here's my blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord, causes, uh, the Lord lift up his face upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord causes to shine upon you and grant you peace. Because while, because while the lot of man is nothing but hard work, there is also grace for the weary, strength for the day, and eternal hope in the promise that he who seeks shall find. And as for right now, your work is not done. But in some sense, your parents have come to a point where, have come to a big milestone in all the work they've put in. In some sense, tomorrow is the big payoff. Um, and uh, for me too, even though I have not put in nearly the work that your parents have, I have had the privilege for three years to share in a little piece of it, in a little, tiny piece of the impossible task of raising a child to be a responsible member of society. And, and I have to admit that in a, just like your parents, once you're gone, I'll miss you. You know what else? After graduation, then I've got grades to do, and after that comes the really fun stuff, because then I've got all this stuff planned, we've got all this curriculum work going on, we're going to be working on doing some stuff to SI Physics, I've got, I've, I've got some, I've got, I've got a new class in Computational Science, I've got to design the whole thing, and then I'm working on uh, maybe a Modern Physics textbook, I don't know, I'm looking into that right now, and then also we have to get the house ready, just got a new house, you have to get the baby's room ready, there's so many things to do, so much exciting work to do this summer, and I'll miss you guys, but I'm going to have a lot of things to do still. <laughs> and for you, I give you my permission to take tonight and tomorrow as a break. <laughs> and once that's over, well listen guys, we've got to get to work. <laughs> you know, you've got, uh, you've, you've, got a, you've got a little bit of break and a chance to enjoy yourself, and then, there's got to, then the work's got to begin again. Because that's what you have stretching ahead for you the rest of your life. You are going to work and work and work. You're going to work harder than you've ever worked, harder than you've ever believed it possible to work, and then you're going to work harder than that, 
and it is going to be awesome. <laughs> Congratulations.